Hello and welcome to the tea. I'm here with James. And I'm here with Tanisha. And before we really begin, we need to ask the burning question that everyone in the nation is asking, at least at some point. <laughs> what comes first in a cup of tea? Is it milk or is it water? Well, I don't know about you, Tanisha, but I'm a milk first person. Just kind of get it in the way while the ke old kettle's boiling. I bet you're a milk fossil kind of guy too, huh? Hey, I'm not the <laughs> only one. And if you guys agree with me, you can send us your opinion on Twitter to at BCU, the tea. Anyways, moving on. Coming up today, we have an interview with the cast and director of King Edward's Journey's End. And then we have an in-depth look into the power social media influencers have on today's society. And our in-house reporter, Beth, heads to Birmingham Connor Con to explore the wider world of cosplay. <laughs> but before we look at that, it's time for this week in the news. So James, here's our first picture. What's the story? So that is David Beckham and he's kissing his daughter. Yep, that's right. And why has it become newsworthy? Didn't people criticise him and call it offensive? Yep. This picture has made headlines due to social controversy surrounding it, with various of people calling it just plain wrong, where really, to me, it just captures a loving, and, um, loving strong father-daughter bond. OK, so what's next? This is easy. Oh, O2 Network going down. <laughs> Correct. The network, which is also the provider for Tesco's and Giftgaff and Sky, had da been down since 5.30 on Thursday, leaving over 32 million customers without data. This has left taxi drivers without work, London commuters stranded without a working bus timetable, and even a few tales of people asking other people to use their phones so they can tweet about it angrily, about this cat catastrophic event. That's <laughs> mad. We really can't fudge from our phones anymore, can we? It's like we've gone back in the dark ages. <laughs> anyway, our final images. Ah, oh, I know this one. This is the winners of the Love Island, Danny and Jack, who broke up on Thursday. That's right. After being together for six months, they announced their breakup, leaving many fans absolutely devastated. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for this week in the news. Now, as you all know, we have recently marked 100 years since the First World War had ended, where other 700,000 British soldiers had lost their lives. This next story focuses on how King Edward's School for Boys have paid homage to it through their own performance, RC Sheriff's play, Journey's End. My name's Jonathan, I'm 16. I go to King Edward VI Camp Hill School for Boys and I play Officer Hardy. My name is Sam Gray and I'm playing Raleigh in Journey's End. My name's Adil, I play the Colonel here in Journey's End. My name is Bilal, Bilal Stitton, and in the play Journey's End, I'm playing Stanhope. I'm Mike Shalford. Um, I taught here for about 50 years, I believe, um, and I've come back for the last three years to uh, carry on with the drama, which I've been doing for a very long time here. Well, I mean, uh, the obvious thing is that it coincides with the 100th anniversary of the end of the First World War. Um, I've also done it before, about 15 or 16 years ago, and it's, um, for an all-male cast, it's a very good play to do. It's also very suitable for young people uh, because the main character, Stano, for instance, uh, although he's a captain and uh, a military cross bearer, he's, um, he's supposed to be about 22 years, no, he's 21 years older in, in the script, um, over two or three years older than the boys uh, in the school. The play of great significance because it is the 100 years since the First World War. I think sort of we should always just um, obviously keep, keep in our minds that that happened and also it happens every day all around the world. People on foreign shores, you know, people of British origin, people of other origin fighting for different armies to maintain what, what peace we can. So I think in terms of that it's, it's always important to just keep that always in the back of our minds. We hear that he's, the, the trench that he's um, responsible for is an absolute mess and that's part of why he wants to leave early is to, is to stop people Stop, stop Stanhope um, looking in and saying, oh, that's, this, this is all your fault, this, this is terrible. The Colonel is, re really, he's just the person who tells the, um, uh, the party what they have to do. It's a big German attack that's going to happen as Stanhope, I'm the captain of a company, which, you know, um, the, you know, the people in the company and the captain himself knows that they're all going towards their inevitable death and it's how he deals with it. I think my, my character, um, exploring the character itself, you know, I have to see how I'm going to come across as a strong leader. The situation of the play is uh, it's set in um, March 1918, and it's set a couple of days before the Germans launched their 
great uh, spring offensive uh, on the 21st of March 1918. Mr Southworth genuinely inspires me. He's been doing shows for around 50 years now and you know to keep on going um, as, as, as well as he is with these amounts of shows. I just enjoy doing it. Um, as, uh, there are some people um, can, which I can't can play music or sing or paint and uh, I can't do anything like that. This is a sort of um, outlet for me of any sort of little bit of creativity that I might have. Oh, that really touched my heart today. If I come up to King Edwards, that is such a creative way to pay your respects to the centenary. I agree. It's amazing that our school can dress it with art as well, and even more to see a retired teacher spend their time helping others to find their passion and tell such a story on stage. It's such a positive influence to the world in every way. And while speaking of influences, there's a new trend in social media on the rise. Social media has become a platform for users all over the world to virtually make their mark. Once a place to stay in contact with friends and reluctantly watch the, your own drunken videos from the crazy night out, which was definitely <laughs> me, James. It's been transformed into something more, so follow Stacey as she takes a closer look. In 2018, the way we interact with social media is forever changing. Social media has transformed into a platform for people across the world to virtually make their marks and influence. A portion of the 40% of world's population that can consume social media. As time evolves, so do our career path, and nobody understands that more than the new trend of social media influence. Yes, that's right. There is a career in posting creative content, having a large social media presence, and popular following, all from the comfort of your own phone. But before you write your letter of resignation, follow me while I get a snapshot of what it is like an inspiring social media influencer. Today I'm joined by Lorraine, an inspiring social media influencer on the rise. As we have seen from your profile, you have some very interesting and artistically constructed content. Is there a guy to take in a good picture and well presented page? I don't think there's one guide for one specific person. I think each person may have their own guide. For me personally, there are many things I take into consideration when it comes to taking pictures. For example, angles. Knowing your angles is so important because I think I know one side of my face comes out better than the other side. So I take that into consideration when I'm taking a picture. And also lighting, literally lighting, depending on what you like. Personally, I like natural lighting. So when the sun is out, that's when I'll most slightly take my pictures. If the sun is not out, there are many editing tools that I use in order to edit my pictures. And I always have to ensure that each picture I take goes with the theme of my Instagram feed. For example, like in this season, it's Christmas season, so literally everything on my Instagram feed is like red <laughs> because that's the season um, that I'm currently in. So I have to ensure that everything, every picture I take has some sort of red in there to go with the theme. Um, but I would say that's my guide, camera angles, lighting, and then feed. Well, how do you wish to expand your online presence in the future? Um, well, I've actually recently launched a blog um, where I actually post more content on there, whereas before I just used to do it on my Instagram. So now hopefully the blog will help me um, reach a wider audience besides just social media. Um, and also I plan on starting a YouTube channel um, so that's coming very soon, so hopefully with that I can also not just reach just the people on like Instagram and stuff like that, but also I can expand more into the YouTube world and, and I also plan on writing an ebook. <laughs> to have demonstrated editing content and considering the different elements seems to create a glamorized and well-constructed image of yourself, so do you ever feel detached from reality? Social media can be very addictive and it has been designed to be like that, so I I think like with anything, it's so good to have a balance. Um, so have a time when you're there and a time when you're not there. I think that balance is so good because it's so easy to be on there and compare yourself to other people, you know, celebrities, so many things that you can compare yourself to, but we have to realize that social media is not real life um, and it's not reality. Yes, the glamour and simplicity of being social media influencer can be appealing, but remember, social media only provides a snapshot of the bigger picture, and whether it's on Instagram, Snapchat, or in reality, there are always two sides to every story. Now back to the studio, where I'm sure the lighting is perfect for an Instagram worthy selfie. 
Yes, yeah, she's right. The lighting in here is actually perfect for Instagram selfie. What do you think, James? James? James, what oh, are you doing? Sorry, I'm just checking out what my most flattering angle is. Look, selfie. OK, let me help you out. Turn around. And again? Yeah, I'd probably say it's the back of your head. Whoa, <laughs> rude. Hey, well, if you're just going to roast me, we probably should move on. Yeah, as you can see, we're here at the challenge table for today's in-studio competition. As you probably know, the total score is at a tie at the moment, with it all to all after last week's shenanigans. <laughs> Previously, we've looked at spiders, had a cook-off, and I've showed you all my amazing makeup skills on my beautiful model here, James. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> but now we're going to put down the face paint, and we'd like to welcome back Martine to help explain today's challenge. Hello. Hello, Martin. Hello, guys. Hi. Are you all right? Oh, good, thank you. Yes. So what have you got planned for us to do today? Drum roll, please. It's a big one. The Tea <laughs> Duncan Challenge. <laughs> so, rules are simple. There's three rounds. You both will choose a biscuit from the selection in front before then revealing it to your other player. After which, you both dunk the biscuit for as long as possible in the tea, with the hopes that the biscuit won't fall apart afterwards. The player whose biscuit survives and who dunks the longest wins the round. Once a biscuit is removed from the tea, it must survive a five-second countdown, timed by me. If your biscuit fails at the test, you automatically lose the round. Is that clear, guys? I think so. So let's play it. Now it's time, James, to select your warrior. Now this, right. that's it. this is an important selection. Okay. Choose your favourite. Let's go. Remember, use a right oh, right now. I'm going for the jammy dodger. Okay. We've got the jammy, jammy dodger. I've got the custard cream, a classic. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right, go for it, guys. All let's right. See. Right, Are I'm hoping ready? the adhesive is Give going to come from dip. the custard. The jam will stick it together, no. so it'll be all right. It won't fail me. Pull it up, it'll guys. It'll be all right. Let's go. Okay. Five, four. Oh, I'm not feeling confident. Oh, three. I'm shaking. Two. Oh. Oh. That was so close. Oh. That was oh. Oh. Guys, I think I'm going to have draw. to give it to both of you. Okay, okay that's okay, fine. Right. Let's go again. Okay. Remember, we've all got right. the best of uh, Oh, right. got one. I'm going for my cookie. My I'm cookie go never fails me. The really? malted milk. Cookie. It's my afternoon snack. <laughs> don't you dunk that, because I want to eat it. Well, <laughs> don't don't break I'll, it. I'll have to, because it's going to make me win. Okay. <laughs> Off we go, guys. That's confident talking, James. Oh, God. Who's in the lead, though, from the other rounds? It is me, but today She's I might She's won the last two. Spiders, makeup. Oh. Up we go, guys. Five, four, I'm shaking three, again. It's going to be me. One, two, oh, it's a draw again, guys. I can see my falling apart as well. Two, two. This what is the one. Do? This is the one. This is the one. We can't, we can't You're gonna not lose this winner. one. I'm not going to lose this one. one. Right, guys, choose right, wisely. All right, I've gone with the custard cream. I've got the chocolate digestive. I hope the tea focuses on melting okay. chocolate. Come like on, this. let's do this. Right, I'm Ready? the girl team right now. Go. Off you go. Come on. Uh, I'm going to let you dip it for a bit longer. I believe. The tension's in the room. Are you ready, guys? I'm ready. I think up you should pull you it up. Five. Oh. Four. Three. Break. Two. Yeah, I know you want yours to break. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, Tunisia, you are the winner. Oh. As always, Martin, as always. Do you know I'm what? I think winner. that was skills and techniques. It was. It was practice. purely. You clearly don't practice this at home. You didn't get the memo. That's how, the last two how now. How do you feel, James? That's the last the two. Lisa. Makeup, spiders. I this is just not fair. I'm sorry. I bet you I'll beat you at go karting. We'll see, James. We should do go karting. We shall see. We should so do go karting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the experience, Martin. That was absolutely great. Thank you for playing, guys. That was brilliant. And now we're going to dive into the world of cosplay as we send our in house reporter, Beth, to Birmingham Comic Con for the weekend. Thank you, James and Tanasia, in the studio. I'm here at Birmingham Comic Con. And we're going to be interviewing some people, see how they feel about their cosplays, how they think of my very first cosplay, and just how they're feeling about Comic Con in general. Okay, we have our very first interviewee. What's your name and who are you cosplaying? Will Prentice, and I'm on Green Arrow. Eli, and I'm playing cosplaying Lapis Lazuli. Um, hi, my name's Kai, and I'm cosplaying Rose Court. My name's Omar at the moment, so uh, I've got my little Pikachu with me. Jay Taylor, and I'm playing as Junkrat. My name's Chris Horton, I'm cosplaying as Genji from Overwatch. My name is Jeff Hawkins and I'm playing Soldier 76 from Overwatch. 
My name is Alan Fane and I'm cosplaying Lena Oxton. Call sign Tracer. <laughs> That's me. My name's Josh and I'm cosplaying Loki from Thor. My name is Jack Gregory May and I'm cosplaying Pennywise the Dancing Clown from It. I'm Daisy and I'm dressed as a Cyberman. I'm Skeletor and I'm from the planet Glark. My name's Hannah and I'm cosplaying Ajani, a planeswalker from Magic the Gathering. Comic Con so far, how are we feeling? It's a bit hot. Pretty good, yeah. <laughs> this is my, the first time I've ever been cosplaying, so... Uh, good. It's fun here, yeah. Coming from a small town, it's nice to see other people in costume. It's great to see the people coming out here. It's really good so far. Pretty busy, but we're having a good reception. Is it your first Comic Con? Um, second, but first one dressing up. No, this is, I've actually lost count, but this is the first, second time I've cosplayed to one. So it's quite difficult, but it's very enjoyable. It really enhances the experience. It isn't, no. It's my first one back for a long time. I used to cosplay Loki about a year ago or so. But... No, I've been going to these for four years now, and this is my 11th MCM Comic Con. So what has actually been your favourite part of the entire experience here so far? Um, so far, meeting you, Beth. Uh, seeing all the cool cosplays and... There's been a lot of Voltron art, which I've been really excited about, that I've seen around. Well, I'm seeing there's a lot of justice around here. So far, it's just seeing all the other people in cosplays. Like, it's actually quite surprising that like, some other cosplays we've not really like seen, but it's definitely going to build as the day goes on. Quite excited for it. Wow. <laughs> Overwhelmed, to be quite honest. I'm feeling good. It's good fun. It's just like, yeah. It's just nice. Lots of people having fun. Like-minded people. My favourite thing for Comic-Con is usually coming to meet all my friends. That's where we all get together, really. I think the Star Wars stand is absolutely out of this world. It's nice to actually see uh, like different people of different ages and varieties actually come together in one little place and be able to share like the same geeky little experiences. I would say just seeing everybody out here, just you know, doing what they want to do, be who they want to be. Like in here, there, there's like no rules to you know, there's no limits to your imagination. So we can all just you know enjoy ourselves and just you know appreciate popular culture as it is here and now. Thank you very much, Captain Jack. Is that it? That's it. Is that all I get? All right. <laughs> Take care, Robin. Bye-bye, all. Bye, -bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Those costumes were absolutely amazing. What did you think of them, James? Well, Jack Sparrow is definitely my favourite. But hey, Tanasia, who would you dress up if, if you went to Comic-Con? Um, I'd probably say Wonder Woman, because she's a spectacular character, but also I am quite wonderful, as demonstrated by my victorious win three times in a row, James. Really? <laughs> really? Now, earlier, we asked you guys to tweet in your thoughts on the show. So let's take a look, then, as we have our tweets coming through now. So, at Smaller Than Milk says, throw back to the time my mum made herself tea and forgot to even use a tea bag. Oh my gosh. She has it so weak though, she didn't notice the difference. <laughs> I love the tat hashtags. Hashtag oh dear, hashtag e wheat tea. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how that tasted. It probably is absolutely horrible, which means that you don't really make a good tea anyways. I'm sorry to the mum that made the tea. No criticism there. <laughs> Let's have a look at our next tweet then. Okay, so at Beth said, never milk first. Ew, the tea ends up being mostly milk and lukewarm. Hashtag water first. Can we also just look at those emojis right there, them vomiting emojis, James? That is proof hashtag that you make tea wrong. Hashtag okay? wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Beth, for that tweet. I am very glad you are on my side. <laughs> and we've also got one from Rye Browse. who says, who puts water in their tea? Just milk for me. <sighs> You're wrong. You're wrong. Uh, so that's like we both disagree here. So we've come to a consensus that that is absolutely terrible. You're making what, like a, a tea latte? Tea latte? <laughs> Anyways. Doesn't sound right. <laughs> but unfortunately, that is all we have time for in the studio today. It's been fun, hasn't it? Yeah. Thanks for dropping by. And as always, we'll be here tomorrow at the same time. We'll be judging the country's best mince pie. That's going to be great. I'm excited for that. As well as interviewing <laughs> this week's mystery guest. Sounds very exciting, but unfortunately, it's goodbye for now. So go home, put on the kettle, make a cup of tea, and enjoy the rest of your day. Put do milk first in your tea. Do not do that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's bye from us, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye.